Hi, everybody. This is David, and welcome to Pupil Services and Non-Discrimination Educational Leadership 655 with Viterbo University. My name is David Proden, and I am glad to be your instructor for this class. So um, let's get into it. The course is now open, so I've emailed each of you instructions on how to access the course in Moodle. So check your inbox. Um, some of those went to your school address somewhere, like Gmail address, whatever that you had filed with Viterbo University. Um, so right now, you can go in and test drive the class. Check it out. If you're not familiar with Moodle, if this is the first time, hey, whatever you post, if it's in an incorrect place or whatever, I can fix it. Don't worry about it. Um, you can download the syllabus, the course rubrics, and you will have access to week one. And once we get into class, and as week one progress, progresses, gets closer to week two, I'll, I'll open up week two. And the same, after week two concludes, I'll open week three. And then toward the end of class, we actually have about a five-week span that we have a research module. And that's where you go and learn more about your district's um, non-discrimination practices, and you will assemble a final project um, specific to those practices and also you know what what are the strengths what are the weaknesses opportunities threats um, in a plan of action so that'll all be detailed out the syllabus is kind of lengthy but it's very detailed it's, it's very detailed and once you get into every week it's very descriptive on what to do so a few things uh, the course officially begins on Monday January 15th so from now until then it's up to you if you want to go in and check out the class. I do ask that you don't go and post anything. I guess if you want to post your biography, that's okay. Um, but don't make responses to discussion questions at this time because I'm not going to be in the class responding before the class starts. Um, so really, this is just to get you familiar with the class, to get you comfortable with Moodle, and to give you an opportunity to download the syllabus and kind of plan out your your schedule accordingly um, for the next uh, four months. So the class begins on January 15th. It concludes on Saturday, April 14th. That's when your final assignment is due for this class. So um, the good news. I remember when I was in college and, and you'd, you'd register for classes and then you'd go to the bookstore and shell out like 300 bucks on books that, you know, would depreciate down to, you know, 10% of their value by the end of the semester. You have no text to purchase, no anything to purchase for this class. So helping you out right there. Um, I've updated this class significantly um, over the last couple of days. I've, I've been working, have revamped um, up and down throughout the in, entire class. So I really think you're in for a great experience, even though it is asynchronous, meaning we're not going to be on at the same time. I will be doing weekly fireside chats, meaning um, it's a video kind of like this, and I'll talk about what we've covered that week in the in the class, and then I'll also discuss um, some of your posts, and or maybe if you email me questions that you have, I'll discuss those. So it'll be very real time or and very contemporary. If something is happening across the state or the nation that has to do with people services and non-discrimination. I might address it in that moment. So I don't record those ahead of time. They get recorded during the week that we actually are in. So that, that makes it uh, much more of a connected feel. So I, I think you're going to appreciate that. So you do have a learning team that you'll be a part of. I remember when I was on learning teams, and I'd be like, oh, no, we have learning teams, um, because I tended to like to do assignments on my own. Well, most of your assignments are on your own. You do have one learning team assignment. And it, regard, it is regarding a student with an allergy. It's described in the, in the syllabus. And basically how you would approach um, putting together a plan that would ensure uh, to the best of your capabilities uh, safety for that student uh, in the school setting. So I have that detailed out in the syllabus. But if you want to work with somebody else on a learning team, so there'll be three or four learning teams depending upon how I split this out, um, you can email me and you can let me know, hey, like I, I know this person, we go to the same, you know, we work in the same district, so I'd like to be on a team with them. Usually I can accommodate that, and I'll try to accommodate that for you, but that needs to be done before January 20th, 
because on January 20th, I'll make a post saying, hey, here are the, the learning teams. And then you can get to work on um, your division of labor, sharing information, you know, your contact information with other people and in, in the team and decide how you want to go about, um, you know, some people do a shared Google Doc or something like that or a wiki document or whatever. It's up to you. Um, but basically, you'll you'll address that from, you know, looking at through the lens of like um, ADA, the Individuals with Disability Education Act, 504, you know, how these things might impact the student. And it, it might seem like a pretty easy um, case at the start, but once you get into it, I think you're going to um, run across some, some underlying deeper questions. And the student's name, I believe, is Bruce, on how to keep Bruce safe in the school setting. And you're also going to find that as you work with other people in the class, how they handle things in their district is probably different how, than how you handle your things in your district. So. Um, now, there are multiple ways to handle things, and there are multiple ways that things can be correct. So I'm not pointing out that, you know, something is going to be right or wrong in how you respond to Bruce, but I will have, have a fireside chat later in the course after I grade those assignments. I will grade those by hand, and I'll return them individually to each of you who are in the respective um, learning teams. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about those. I'll, I'll have a discussion about here's what one group did, here's what another group did, here's what another group did. Um, so something to really think about because we are becoming much more medical-based in student services. So if you're a special education director, part of your role, uh, a growing part of your role is dealing with um, the medical needs of children. The growing, the number one medical diagnosis for children right now um, is anxiety. And, and various mental health uh, diagnoses are, are just skyrocketing. So we do have a very uh, strong presence of medical side to the job that you'll be, be doing. And, and we'll get into that once we get into class. Um, so discussion questions and um, substantive post. So for weeks one through seven, you will have discussion questions and there are two questions for every week. You need to respond to each of those questions and basically provide about a 100-word response. I'm not going to measure the words. In the syllabus, I think it says 100 or 150, but you know, basically about a paragraph response. Um, and then also, you need to make eight additional posts, which will probably be to your peers who have made you know, their own responses to the discussion threads, or I do have other... Um, like videos that I've posted and things like that, work I've done, and, and you can comment on that. So basically you need to make your your response to each discussion question and then eight additional posts every week for weeks one through seven. So um, that might sound like a lot, but trust me, people have made 20, 30 posts a week. They just get go in and, and kind of go crazy. And, um, you know, I think it's very reasonable Let's make sure you, you allocate your time to do that and um, that you're making, again, two, a, a, a response to every discussion question for weeks one through seven, and then you're also making eight additional posts. I'll, I'll be actively posting, too, so you'll get to kind of see what I do. Like, I will copy somebody's post. I'll copy part of it, and I'll make a response of saying, like, in this part of Sarah's post, she said whatever, and I want to expand upon that by I have these experiences with X, Y, Z, and here's how it plays into, you know, contributing to Sarah's post and whatever. So I want this to be relevant to you. Please email me questions that you have. Um, feel, you know, we we do have every week this, this weekly fireside chat area, which is kind of, you know, you can just share your thoughts about the week and, and how things re reflect upon you. It's amazing because sometimes with this class, and I have to preface this right now, like I'll introduce things that will kind of um, catch people off guard. And one was like um, allergy education. You know, I talked about that in a fireside chat of, of how that's become a, a very prominent role for student services directors is making sure that staff are educated about um, food allergies, for example, like peanut allergies and things like that. Kind of goofy because I think w w that the Allergy Awareness Month is like April, I believe. That's the goofy part of this. And we need to make that in schools. <laughs> like we can't wait till April to like do – you know, the awareness, we need to move it up to like October. So, um, but we talk about, you know, th things like this. I'll, I'll bring up topics like this. 
and um, and feel free to say. And, and one one student emailed me who already was in a director role in in her first year, and she said, "Oh my goodness! Like I had no idea that this fell under my job description." And then uh, you know she had met with her her um, you know food service um, individuals and, and did an inquiry about how do we prevent cross contamination and, and things like that. Just that she was aware of those things and. How are you educated that you know when a student comes through the food line and and you know their first or second grade that they have like an egg allergy or a milk allergy or something like that? You know, does it show up when they they punch in their number or their code or something like that or or, or how does this happen? So it, it was that she was very appreciative and said, "No one ever told me this when I took the job." And sometimes that happens. So by no means is this meant to freak you out. Um, being a student services director is very invigorating, and the fact that no two days are the same, um, you know, makes makes it a job that can be very uh, exciting and enriching. So I found that in my 12 years as a student services director. Um, so please, and I've had students who have contacted me who I had in class one, two, three years out, and something. Um, you know, occurs in their district or they run across and they say, what's your thought on this or whatever? And um, and we kind of uh, work through that. So feel free to, you know, once you have me um, as an instructor in a class, you can always contact me with, with questions. Now, I can't, you know, I obviously don't supersede your, your district advice or <laughs> legal advice or anything like that. And some of the items that I've shared in this class are a little bit older, um, some you know some are extremely current, like just you know from a month or two ago. But some are a little bit older, and like questions that I had assembled with my counselors and psychologists and principals to ask a our, our school attorney about pupil services. You know, like what it you know what records need to be confidential, what records aren't confidential, and you know, so on and so forth. But and and that's shared within the class. And and the cool part of that is you can look and see the format that I used and then know like, oh, this is something that would be kind of useful for me as a student services director, maybe to work with my superintendent and to say, you know, can we have our school attorney um, answer, you know, these these set of 10 questions. And you work ahead of time with your counselors and psychologists and principals on things. And a lot of it, you know, might be, you know, custody issues and, and questions like that regarding like who gets the IP, who doesn't, and the invite and whatever. And, and you just give these questions, you know, you narrow it down to like your 10 to your school attorney. And then that attorney comes in, answers the questions and might answer a few others. Costs a few bucks, but really well worth it. So um, I drew the microphone kind of close to me today uh, down here. Studio's gone through some upgrades. So I actually have a podcast. Um, if you go to safetyphd.com, you can access all of my blog posts. I do a weekly podcast that goes uh, across the nation. Actually, I get um, international feedback on it. Um, but that is, um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm known as the safety doc. I talk largely about school safety, but a lot of safety topics in general. It's kind of weird because on um, when Hurricane Irma made landfall, uh, Fox News out of New York City contacted me early in the morning and said, Dave, how is this going to um, impact um, commercial drone operators who want to donate their time to surveying for damage? So I kind of went through that with the head of Fox News, and then they they had their question set ready when they sought out their um, drone operators in Texas who were then volunteering their services. So I've been involved in some really interesting interesting things. So... Um, Let's let's talk about assignments. So, one is you have a student disabilities percentage post that you need to make pretty early on in this class. Pretty easy to get if you can talk to your special education director. Um, you can also obtain that information from the the DPI, but you know your special education director in your school will have that. But it's it's basically you know we have our overall population of disabilities is fifteen percent, and of that you know. We have so many students identified as OHI, other health impaired, SLD, so many speech language. And, and look at that and, and ask, like, are there any trends happening here? Because a trend that I'm seeing is we're having more and more students identified as OHI or other health impaired. 
um, because of growing anxiety and depression and mental health needs. And probably less SLD because once RTI hit, response to intervention, um, that became a, a process which, you know, I would say was partially effective and partially uh, staff didn't want to go through the rigmarole of the, that whole data keeping process and didn't do the referrals. So we've seen SLD numbers kind of drop. So you also have a learning team case study, which we talked about, Bruce, uh, that'll, that'll be due in class. And you have a SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. There's many tools out there to kind of get a, a handle on what's happening in your, your district regarding like pupil services and non-discrimination. You're going to use the SWOT analysis, which is very basic, um, but can yield a lot of powerful information. What you need to do, I give an example of that, but actually the example I point out <laughs> was an example that did not receive full points because they left a few things out. You have to have eight strengths, eight weaknesses, eight opportunities, eight threats, so 32 things in total. And then um, you need to also identify like people that would be impacted, like superintendent, school board, teachers, things like that. And you don't have to identify those people by names, just to say like, you know, the school board, superintendent, um, whatever. But um, so you're going to do a SWOT analysis. You can go on to Google, type in SWOT analysis, and there'll be like a million of them that'll show up. So they'll be like all over the place. So um, that's kind of a cool assignment. It's like bullet points, so you don't have to spend like up a lot of time. Here's one thing straight up. You don't have to worry a lot about APA formatting and things like that. And I do want, you know, if you do have something that you want to cite, then do properly cite it like APA style. But, um, you know, like for your SWOT analysis, there's nothing you need to cite for your SWOT analysis. Um, there's also a FEMA course that you'll be taking for this course. And it's an um, instant command systems or ICS for school administrators. It, it's free. You'll have to register with FEMA. So I give it, I've given you the link. I've taken the course myself. And I, I think it's very helpful for anyone who's in a people services role to understand how instant command structures work with outside agencies such as fire, police, EMS. So let's say that something happens where your school is being evacuated because of a tornado or, or you're not going to evacuate because of a tornado, but let's say, let's say a gas leak or, or something like that where you're going to evacuate the school. How does, how does um, e the instant command system interface with, with you? I mean, because you also are responsible for making sure students with disabilities are safely uh, evacuated from the building in, in any medications and so forth. But then, you know, the police or fire are responsible for a perimeter and things like that. So how does this all work together? And, and this, this course helps with that. So it is a free FEMA course. You'll go in, in the past, you actually had to use your social security number. You don't have to do that anymore. So they just have you register and, and you take the course. It's about two, three hours. It's very, val it's val valuable, I'm telling you. I wouldn't have you do it otherwise. And basically you get a certificate at the end. You just need to, it's a PDF. You give me the PDF, email it to me. Um, we're fine, or you submit it, I believe, in the class. We're fine, we're good. Um, and that's something when you go to apply for a job, unless you're already doing this role, but if you apply for a job, it's, it's great to have that as an asset of saying, listen, I've taken a FEMA course, and just so you understand what's available through FEMA, they have so many courses for free, which are uh, great professional development that you can use with your, with your staff regarding uh, people services and non-discrimination. But this is, this is really important, I think, ICS. Um, for for staff dealing with uh, pupil services and non-discrimination. Because one thing might come up, like you have students evacuated off-site. Well, what if the students have um, certain medication needs or certain behavioral needs? Like, do you share that information um, with people who might be at the receiving site of where these students are at, or how do you do that? So there's, there's these questions that will surface. Um, and, you know, in the moment, you always act in the best interest of the student. I mean, that's what you do. But this, this class, that, that FEMA course will certainly be of, of use. And then your final project is to examine your existing non-discrimination practices in your school district uh, with a critical eye based on what we've covered in the, that first seven weeks of class. So, so basically you have what's called a research module. It's about five weeks. You can go in, obtain that information from uh, uh, staff that work in your district, your own observations, pulling information off the DPI website, uh, I would encourage that you interview some people in your district, even principals. You do something, what I call like the first the first 50 feet. 
meaning that you walk into some of your buildings, take a look around and are you recognizing diversity in your buildings? Are you walking up and down the hallways? And maybe what you see at the high school is, hey, there's, there's you know, printed out sheets, you know, and, and, you know, little banners on lockers if people are in sports and whatever, but, you know, not so much if they're in like drama or if they're in other clubs, you know, Gay Straight Alliance or something like that. So, you know, I, I think that's really important to take that, that keen observational eye with you as you complete this existing non-discrimination practices um, assignment. And then it's also kind of a plan for the future of like how would, what, what would you do like to increase um, uh, more inclusive practices in your, in your district? So it's, it's a really cool project to do, and I think it's, it's a great stepping stone from taking this class to moving into the position as a pupil services director. So let, let's talk, um, just I have the class up right to the right of me. I actually have three monitors in front of me. Um, so yeah, you will see um, right now as I'm going into the class, the introduction this video um, to class, and then um, also some tutorials from for Moodle if you need those, where the weeks are, you know, when, when the weeks start and when they end, and then the research module, which is actually March 5th through April 14th, give you plenty of time on that last assignment. We have the Cyber Cafe. You can go in, hey, if you have something like you want to discuss, but it doesn't fit into anything we're really talking about, you can post it there and, and we can we can explain it. Uh, you know, expand upon it more. Underneath is resource sharing. So let's say somebody says, hey, I, we have this really great document we use in our district. Um, it's like an IEP at a glance type thing. We kind of organically generated it. My district said it's okay to share it, which is something I want you to do. Like just don't share things <laughs> unless your district has said it's okay. Um, and not with any identifying information. And, and then, you know, we can share it there for other people. And then technology tips. You know, if people in this class are saying, I don't know how to find out how many posts I've made. And, you know, you can jump in and say, well, here's how you do it. So, um, and then underneath is the learning teams. Those are blank right now. They're, they're unpopulated. I'll, I'll put the team members in um, on the 20th of January. Uh, the syllabus is present, plus the course rubrics, and plus a SWOT analysis sample, which is due early in the class. And then you will also see week one. And then once we get toward the week, end of week one, I'll open week two and then week three and, and so forth as we go through the class. The reason I don't open everything at once is I don't want you to go in and um, try, to, try to work ahead and try to just complete everything at once. The class kind of builds upon every week, so that's how I'm going to present it to you. Um, so maybe, you know, it's a, a little frustrating to not see everything, although you'll see it in the syllabus. But, um, you know, I, I do this for the reason that if I do open everything up at once, there might be a couple people who go in and, and just try to get everything done, you know, like the, the first week or two, which isn't any good because it, it doesn't facilitate the discussions, the rich weekly discussions um, that we'll have in this, this class through the threads. So, hey, let's talk a little bit about me before we, we wrap this up. And I'm just making sure I've got the class on the right, got the syllabus here on the left. Um, if you notice any discrepancies in the syllabus or in the class, please let me know. Uh, sometimes links go dead. I've checked all the links. You know, they were working as of today, <laughs> but that doesn't mean they'll work a week or two from now and that I can go in and address that. Or if something um, conflicts that I've posted between the syllabus and the class, you know, that I can rectify that. You know, I, I doubt there'll be, you know, many occurrences of, stuff like that. But if something pops up, please let me know and I'll make appropriate adjustments. Um, but again, you know, the syllabus is very, very detailed. And then once you open up every week, you'll be able to see basically if you have your discussion questions and then, you know, you'll, you'll have some assignments, you know, that'll be spread out through class two. So, well, let's talk. Yeah. About me. I was a special education director for 12 years and, uh, right now work as a speech language pathologist and department uh, therapy department chairperson at the Wisconsin School for the Blind. And in that role, actually, our therapy department is much more similar to a medical therapy department. So we operate kind of in that mode. It, it's, it's an absolutely phenomenal facility to work at, quarter of a mile long 
dorms, students stay there, you know, gymnasiums, pool, auditorium, the whole thing. Um, and a massive, massive uh, therapy department, you know, it, it's just absolutely incredible. So um, I get to oversee that, which is, I think, the greatest job in, in the world. I absolutely love it. So that also frees me up with a lot of time because we don't have a school board and other things um, to do the work that I'm passionate about in consulting. Um, I am a senior consultant with a company called Sprigio. You see them in the background, but S-P-R-I-G-E-O.com. Uh, which is a nation's leader in online bullying and harassment and also school threat reporting software. So I work with Sprigio um, several times a month and with districts across the country in um, educating and then also analyzing the user interface and the data that comes in for threat reporting. And working right now with uh, Sprigio on... I, uh, modifying the reporting system to better accommodate students with disabilities because we know uh, a lot of things that we produce, and you can do this through, there's various readability um, websites online, readability websites. You can take a passage maybe from like your student handbook and put it in and it'll give you a readability, and it'll kind of um, take it across like a Fry scale and, and Dolch and some others. And it, it will say like, here, this is like a sixth grade, seventh grader could read this. And what you'll find a lot of times is that um, things are presented to students with disabilities at a level that's much higher than what they're able to process. So they, they lose out on that. So that's one thing is you want to make sure your disability awareness, your reporting awareness systems when it comes to non-discrimination, if a student feels like they have been the recipient of a discriminatory act, they understand the reporting system and how to report that. So I work with that um, on a, a national basis, which is really invigorating, really outstanding work. I get to work with states, get to work with some of the largest school districts in the United States, and absolutely love doing that. So um, I also, uh, just a little bit you know, professionally, so I worked on a Hollywood film with uh, producer David Opst. You might remember him. Uh, he was the producer of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and also Revenge of the Nerds. So if you've seen those two movies, those were his. And he contacted me a couple summers ago and was working um, on a Hollywood film regarding a school intruder. And I have a PhD from the University of Wisconsin-Madison where I focused on um, high-stakes decision-making in schools, in medical and healthcare, but really focused my work on school safety. And that um, had brought the attention of, of David and his folks out in Hollywood. And I actually got to co-author and co-direct this film with him. A phenomenal experience uh, <laughs> to work on a Hollywood film. Never thought I would do that in my life. So I've served as an expert witness and work with um, lawyers across the country on school litigation cases. I do represent the plaintiffs. So I represent the people who are suing the school districts. And these um, uh, exclusively deal with special education and pupil services. Um, just recently completed a year-long case that I was working on. I went through 17,000 pages of deposition in that single case and uh, produced an extensive uh, report indicating um, findings, um, to the to the to the court or to the judge, in that, and we'll be participating in that trial um, in 2018. So I have some very special insight from that role as an expert witness on what you need to look out for as a pupil services director, and in all of these cases that I've ever worked on, um, you can typically identify a couple small oversights, errors, whatever, that, that mushroomed into something very substantial. So I'm going to, as we get into the fireside chat, point out some of these things. I have to, to be you know, rather vague because I can't get specific at any cases. Um, but you know these types of cases that I'm brought in on are very high profile. Um, you know, meaning that, you know, a student has completed suicide or, or something like that as, as an alleged co um, 
not consequence, but, you know, reaction to bullying that was not responded to by the school, again, alleged by the, the plaintiff. So when I dig into things like that, you know, I work with legal teams and we'll put in hours and, and you know, they will examine all of the policies. They'll examine professional development, what the special education um, director uh, the role that that person had in making sure that staff were informed of, you know, uh, suicide prevention, um, as far as professional development, the chain, uh, the, who should they should bring concerns to, and so forth. I'll go through all of that policy, how often that was revisited, who was trained, what materials were used. I mean, I really get specific into these things, and I become kind of a leader in, in the nation on these cases. Um, so I want to share some of that with you because I don't want you ever to fall into some of those situations because people who have gone through that um, have had it, it's really it's it's really hard to be litigated against when you are a people services director um, and that is that's that happens you know more than it happened in the past but it, it's very very difficult um, in those situations so I'm, I'm going to give you the tools to best position yourself in the event that there is a, any litigation that would come against you being named in a, a suit with the district. So you're like, oh, God, Dave, don't scare me this early. Like we haven't even had our first day of class yet. No, it's not all scary. No, no, no. But again, because I do work on this side of things, I want to share that with you because I think um, there's, there's just steps and, and some vigilance that can position you very well of what's called meeting the standard of care um, if you are ever you know brought up in in a legal uh, case regarding bullying harassment suicide anything like that so um, I have uh, book contracts with Roman and Littlefield regarding um, a book called the lessons of lower Manhattan where I analyzed the evacuation of 500,000 people from lower Manhattan in about nine hours and exam I, I worked with um, the head of military medicine, Dr. Paul Rapp from out of the White House and some of the nations and, and world leaders on that and basically attribute it to what's called a transference dynamic, which I won't get into here and it's not really relevant. Um, but it is, um, it's pretty exciting because it, it's a way to analyze that that no one else has really come up with. I do a weekly radio show out of Los Angeles um, on the 405 Media so that reaches uh, thousands of people, and I do receive much feedback uh, from that. Talk about school safety, but also talk about other things um, such as like subjective reality, objective reality, and, and just the, the kind of the whole gamut. Um, but more or less, you know, try to focus in. I do interview a number of people, too. I do have um, Danny Woodburn coming on the show who was on seven episodes of uh, Seinfeld um, and he talks about you know uh, as a as a person you know with dwarfism in Hollywood how he was able to be successful um, you know I have people coming on the show who have been you know players in the NFL um, a, a person who is a voiceover with um, the the TV show, The Living Dead, and so forth. And, but we, we talk about, you know, different aspects of, of safety. And like the NFL, it's not like, you know, what happens about concussions, but it's more like um, the person there is, uh, what happens when you sign that first contract for? Millions of dollars. Like, and they share things, you know, they sit down with you and say, hey, your family needs to immediately get, like, extra liability insurance because people will target them for frivolous lawsuits and things like that, try to get settlements and whatever. But, um, so yeah, I, I get to do that. I encourage you to consider the podcast because I do consider, I, I do go through a lot of stuff that's school safety and it's always relevant because it's, you know, weekly podcasts and I give information on how you can look that up and, and, and access that. I'm also on Twitter at safety PhD at safety PhD on Twitter. And I usually only post stuff related to school safety and in the podcast. Again, I say school safety because I think that's a growing part of your role as a student services director. I've been with Viterbo for 15 years, and I've taught uh, well beyond 60 classes in that time span. Um, 
teach in educational leadership, also teach in the reading program, um, special education program, and the post uh, bachelor program. And in those courses, I, I in those class, classes, I, other programs, I'm kind of more into inclusive practices. And in this class, of course, is pupil services and non-discrimination. So I've been with Viterbo again 15 years and have instructed face-to-face, -face, blended. This class is all online. Um, so I've done, I've done the various, you know, formats. I've instructed for other, you know, universities also. So I'm, I'm really happy to be instructing this course in spring. Again, I went through a total kind of fine tooth um, updating of the, the class for 2018. And, you know, it's, I'm, I'll say, you know, it's a very important role that you are about to take on. And some of you might already be in this role with emergency license or something like that. And we really need, because of, because of the turnover in, in pupil services, um, you know, we need, we need people to, to do this, you know, to, to take on this, this leadership role. And again, it's, it changed so much um, from when I started. I remember back in 2002, my, my first role in pupil service as a pupil services director, um, I had the report that was due to DPI was a handwritten report. It was narrative <laughs> about your pupil services program. You know, like we have these, uh, this is what we offer. We have these classrooms and these buildings and whatever. It was, it was just a narrative. And then, um, you know, how that's got more sophisticated now OCR requirements and so forth. And it was before, um, you know, the the mandates Act 309 for bullying, uh, reporting and, and, and things like that. So I'm going to walk you through again those things as we get into our our weekly fireside chats. And feel free to email me questions. I'll respond to those during the fireside chats. Um, but again, I, I'm thrilled, really thrilled to be working with you uh, in the capacity of instructor in this class. And I'm really happy to, of, of my 12 years as a student services director were, were really uh, great times in my, my professional life and propelled me once I got my PhD from UW-Madison to do other things, you know, like, you know, be a movie director. And, and I absolutely am, am thrilled, you know, to, to be in this, to be a, a national consultant and work with districts across the country um, on pupil services and non-discrimination. And, and probably the biggest thing right now I'm working on uh, with entire states and that I can't identify, but um, is how to make this uh, pupil services and non-discrimination, how, how to make it reachable for students with disabilities. Because we talk about bullying and harassment um, and, and, you know, different types of bullying, gender bullying, racial uh, bullying, things like that. And, and yet a lot of that stuff is presented at a level that is beyond students with, with disabilities that have learning disabilities or autism or so forth. So I'm working on how we make that interface more accessible for more students um, and, and our reporting interface, how we make that more accessible and how we also help students identify and, and use the, the terminology that, um, where they can describe those things. And I'm, I'm working right now with an expert um, in child grooming um, on specific language that we can use with the interface, again, with Sprigio, the company where I'm a senior consultant. So very exciting. I wish you well in this class. Hey, I'm excited to be back again 15 years all from down here in the Safety Dock studio. But again, David Perodin, um, I'm glad to be here with you. Please contact me with any questions. Moodle is open. It's okay if you post your biography or your introduction um, now, but please do not go in and start answering any of the discussion thread questions until class actually begins on the 15th. And by the way, on the 15th, you need to post your biography. Like if you haven't posted by then, it needs to be up the 15th. Because one of the things for um, financial aid for any of you who are taking the class through financial aid is that you have to access class on the first day. So it's, it's very, very critical. And how you access it is you access and make your post to your, to your um, introduction thread. So welcome again. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to this class. Again, we start on January 15th. And I will see you then. Thank you. <laughs>